god, I irritate myself genuinely sometimes. It is just tragic. What's happening to me? I don't know. I'm sick of it and I'm done with it. Curb, curved my craving. Curved, curved or curved? Oh my god, curved my longing or my craving? Do I know English? Do I know what things are? Hello you guys. <laughs> Coming to you from a new location. New location unlocked. Um, I know it looks a little plain. That's because it is a little plain and it needs some work. But for now, Darcy's very happy because this allows him to sit on my lap <laughs> while I film. Let me know what this space needs. I almost feel like putting a tiny like bookshelf that's maybe like tall behind me or like a poster. I, I need something back here. So you guys let me know what needs done. But um, let's get down to business. <laughs> the reason we're all here, uh, it is time to talk about what I read in May. Oh, are you ready, Durs? He's gotta get cozy before we start, start talking business, huh? Okay, there we go. Camera is adjusted for those who care about seeing more of Darcy. Um, I know I do. So adjusted so you can watch him snuggle while we discuss what I read in May. First order of business is looking at the stats from this month. Of course, hi Darcy, he's precious. Um, as always, I'm using Storygraph for all this good info that we love to look at. Genuinely, I don't think, if I'm being honest here, I, I'm thinking the stats are not gonna be great this month. But we'll discuss all of that right in detail <laughs> further in the video. First things first, um, I read five books this month. Womp womp. That is just like so upsetting that I only read five. It is what it is though. And you know, it is okay to not read 10 books in a month. Like just for anyone watching, reading is a hobby. We love reading. Um, it's great. And it's not a competition. It is all for the sake of enjoying your hobby. So. Don't feel disheartened. I know it's hard because I feel disheartened, but out of slumps come the greatest reading sprints. I should coin that. Okay, well, let's get into the details. So first we're going to start with the mood, Avi. The two moods that stand out here are tense and adventurous. So that's kind of fun. Um, three of the books were in the same series, so I feel like the themes are going to be very specific, probably mostly to those three books, if that makes sense, are going to be like the top ones. So we have moods. Next we have genres, which is always fun. Um, romance, clearly the winner, uh, with fantasy falling right behind. Again, three in the same series, they were all romanticy, so makes sense. Then format wise, this is what's wild this month. I did not read a physical book this month. Not a one. I read four books digitally. Um, two were ARCs. One was with Kindle Unlimited. And then one was from Hoopla through my library. Um, and then one audiobook that I also got through the library. So I read nothing that I actually own this month. Which again is not good to see, but uh, you know, again, it is what it is. So lastly, this is what's gonna like really show you how this month went, like this number right here. My average star rating from this month was a 2.9. You guys, I don't know, are things just trending down for me? Like what's going on? I, I don't know, I don't know. But those are the stats for May. If you looked at your stats and have any you want to share, let me know. May clearly was just a struggle for me. And that's okay. That's okay. I hope that means June is going to be better than I could even imagine. Let's get into the actual details of what I read this month, what I thought of everything, and then we will end with my favorites from the month. So we'll end on a high note. Um, but first, <laughs> the books I read. First on the docket is Trial of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. Tooley. This one ended up getting a three star from me. Features a female main character who is imprisoned for 12 years and is kidnapped from said prison to compete 
in a series of trials to win the heart of the Sun King. This is the first one in the artifacts of Uranos. Uranos? Not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it is the first one in that series. This first book definitely lacked some world building for me. It lacked character development and it, and it happened to be, you know, quite predictable for the romanticy genre. But I will also admit that it was quite intriguing. It kept me interested. I read it super quickly, like within a few days. And it really reminded me of like just bad TV shows that you can't stop watching. Like honestly, Rain comes to mind. Like shows that are just not that amazing, but you can't put it down. Um, I don't know if you guys have things like that in your life. It definitely gave the vibe that it was written for 15 year olds by 15 year olds, which there is nothing wrong with that. You know, it's its own little niche there. But I think that's kind of why it got a three star in the end is it just lacked depth um, in pretty much every arena, but it was very easy to understand, a very quick read and still entertaining. So as I said, I continued to pick up that series. So I picked up the next in that series, which was Rule of the Aurora King. Um, also, these books are all on Kindle Unlimited. I forgot to say that, but hopefully I'll put it like maybe under the books. So the second one, I'm not going to give you a ton of detail on what's happening because obviously it would be spoilery, I guess, from the first one. But this one ended up getting a 2.75 from me. It was kind of bad and also kind of not bad. <laughs> I was actually so obsessed with um, the flashbacks that start to happen in this book um, slash like multiple timelines, like past timeline and current timeline. I really love the character we are following in the past. Um, she was ruthless through and through. She gave bad bitch energy. I was into that and I think I wanted more of that. I think she was a very interesting character to follow. And our current timeline was where the story was lacking for me. I won't lie, there is some steam in the second one. Um, it's definitely a slow burn in the first one. And then the second one, you're finally getting some steam. So got no qualms there, but I have qualms elsewhere. <laughs> I felt like the bickering and the inner monologue got so repetitive and I felt like there were tropes thrown in yet again. I just feel like this is happening all the time with current romanticy and fantasy. Tropes just thrown in just to have them. And I just don't want that. Like I like tropes. Bring some in that makes sense for our characters. There are tropes for a reason, but we don't need to just tick boxes with tropes. Like I just am sick of that. Sorry, that's me being here. I'm sick of it and I'm done with it. Also, there is a nickname given to one of the characters in this book that needed to be <laughs> laid to rest. You know, we needed to let that rest in peace. Um, it was overused and it wasn't a good nickname. So it just drove me crazy to have it on every other page. But I will say overall, in this one, the plot is becoming much more interesting and it's picking up. I just felt like the majority of the current timeline was kind of pointless in this book and didn't bring to the table what I needed, you know? Let's go ahead and actually talk about the third one that comes out in June um, while we're talking about them. I think that makes the most sense. So let's talk about the third installment and then I'll finish talking about the other two books I read this month. Okay, Fate of the Sun King. This one is the third installment in the series. It comes out on June 4th. What this book has in store for you, and I would say this whole series for the most part, but what we are leading up to and what we are getting here. We're continuing to get the past timeline, current timeline, flashback situation, found family. We're getting more spice. And what's so interesting about this third installment is we're getting new POVs. So this third one, we're suddenly hearing from other characters that we've been following through the first two books. This one brings the depth to this story. We are getting character development. We are getting a better idea of the lore of this kingdom and more background on what's going on through the past timeline. So happy about all those things. Here's where the downfall was. It was not paced super well. The first two were so addictive, easy to read. This one had some trouble with pacing because I think she tried to put too much world building in this third book. 
if it had been sprinkled through the last two a little bit better, I think that this third one wouldn't have felt so bogged down, but it, it just felt like, it just felt like you had to trudge through all this world building in the middle that ruined the pace of her novel. And as much as I love the past timelines and the multiple POVs, something about this installment did not execute those well. I think what wasn't working was she would show us the background, the past timeline, some of the lore, and you're starting to understand things. But then our current day characters have to figure out and understand that same thing that we already know, because we've seen the flashback. And so then we have to watch our current characters figure it out. And then it gets re-explained to us. I feel like something in there like needed to be sorted out because I just felt bogged down by repetition and world building that just created some problems in the novel. Along with that, I think the scheming and planning elements are very central to this novel. However, that kind of took away from the intrigue and the action of the book because it was mostly planning and scheming in this novel and I wanted to see things happen, you know what I mean? I wanted things to start getting done. But as I've said, this is an addictive series and I will be reading the next one. This one ends on a huge fat cliffhanger. It's gonna literally make you count down the days until the next installment. This one ended up receiving a 3.25 from me and I have high hopes, high hopes that number four will bring all the action that we are missing from this one. The next book on the docket is Happily Never After by Lynn Painter. This one I ended up listening to the audio of and this one ended up receiving a 2.5 from me. So let's get into the details. This is her newest adult romance. It features two love skeptics who decide to become professional wedding objectors together. And it's kind of a friends to lovers, slowish burn situation. First, I'm going to just sprinkle in the little bit of positive I have to say about this book. I thought that the idea of this book was very cute, but I just felt like it ended up not being executed well, despite being a good idea. And this might just be a personal matter. For me, her adult novels always, always, always lack depth. Our characters are as deep as a kiddie pool maybe even just a puddle. There is no depth to the characters. And for me, when I'm entering a, especially a romance, it is about the characters for me. And her characters in specifically her adult books never serve, never. I just didn't get the feeling that they really felt deeply for each other in any way. And I don't think her steam is giving, okay? Her spice doesn't need to be there. Everyone does not need to have spice in their books. Every author is not built to write spice. And I just have to say, I think her Lynn Painter's talent shines is in her YA novels. I just didn't feel anything for this book. Um, and it was super forgettable. Like right now I couldn't tell you who the characters are, any traits about them. It just, I'm gonna do myself a favor and stop picking up her adult romances. I think this is my third one and I've re rated, I think all of them like under three. I'm just going to stop picking those up and stick to her YA novels. And lastly, we have one graphic novel to talk about today. I can't believe how quickly we're getting through these books. I mean, I guess that's what happens when you only read five books. <laughs> so I picked up Nancy Drew, The Palace of Wisdom by Kelly Thompson and gave this one three stars. This was a graphic novel adaptation of Nancy Drew, the classic that she is. We follow her as she returns to her hometown to solve a few mysteries that might just be connected, question mark. It's a quick entertaining read where we get to see all those characters that we know and love from Nancy Drew um, come back together. This one definitely curbed my craving. Curb, curved my craving. Curbed, curbed or curved? Anyways, it, it fulfilled my longing for like a Scooby-Doo, Nancy Drew team mystery situation. It really got the vibes right. In these, Nancy is very cool. She's more of like a cool girl, badass persona. 
instead of like, you know, OG Nancy Drew. And I like how this story had a very diverse cast and it ended up being darker than you might think for Nancy. Um, I think if you've watched the new show, which is my guilty pleasure, like this kind of fits more of that vibe. I think what really held it back, because I liked the art, I liked the vibe of all the characters, but I just felt like this plot wasn't that amazing. It was like the characters were good, the setting was good. Our plot? It was fine. Like the mysteries just weren't that interesting in this one. I don't know if it was just because it was shorter. It beats me, but that's why I ended up getting a three. Um, still enjoyable, still entertaining, but not anything to write home about. Now that we are done talking books, it is time to talk favorites. This is one of my favorite elements and I can't wait to share what my favorites were for May. Okay, getting into the details, starting with this cute little French bakery, cash only, makes these beautiful, beautiful, traditional, I don't know if they are traditional, but these beautiful pastries that I have been addicted to. We've gone twice this month alone. Um, they're just gorgeous. They taste delicious and it's really fun to get like a little treat. Who doesn't love a pastry? But it's so good. We go and get coffee and then we go to the pastry shop and it, it, my day's already made by 10 a.m. You know what I mean? Anyways, it's delicious. Another favorite from this month are like my new chairs. This is not the best view, but we finally got reading chairs for the office. I'm actually planning. Let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in more of this. I was planning to do kind of an office reading room makeover and kind of take you along with us as we make this more of a cozy room. If you are interested in more, let me know. I'd love to do a little video kind of showing you how we're redecorating, where we're getting stuff, etc, etc. The next favorite I have to share are salmon bowls. It's really just rice with salmon bites that we cook in the air fryer but it's so delicious. And then we add like avocado, edamame, cucumber, like whatever you want with that. They're so good and taste just so unique. I love making these. Um, if you are interested in the recipe, we can always like include it in a vlog sometime soon, or I can put it in the comments or something, but it's so good. I'm not the best cook, but it's so easy to make. I would eat it every week if, if Brennan could tolerate it. <laughs> the next favorite on the list of favorites <laughs> is honestly my short form videos and content. And the last favorite, y'all are gonna wanna sit down for this favorite because this one has taken over my life. Every thought, everything I do is because of this show. And for those who are following me on other platforms, you probably already know. <laughs> you probably already know where I'm going with this. Maxton Hall, my new personality. Look it up. Um, it's everything to me, you guys. This is a series on Prime Video. It is a German show dubbed in English, but the dubbing is so wonderfully done. Like you can tell they put in the work. And it is so enemies to lovers coded and it gives a little bit of Wattpad, but not cringe, okay? It's like everything you love and a bit of like, enemies to lovers romance without the cringe. I don't know if it's just because it's not Americans acting. I don't know, but it is not cringy. I ate this show up. It's all I think about. I've already started rewatching it. Do I need to say more? Do I need to say more? Please give it a try, <laughs> please. I swear if you watch like two episodes and you are not down bad, I don't know. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, that is my last favorite of this month. Sorry if you follow me on other platforms and you are seeing all my reposts. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. If you feel so inclined, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. All of these help my channel and help me know what you're enjoying. Remember, I love my comment section. I reply to all my comments, so I don't know why you wouldn't comment. And let me know what you read this month, what you loved this month. I'm just down to gab. I'm here to yap. Please feel free to interact and enjoy this space and this community with me. But we've reached the, the hardest part of the video, which is uh, when I gotta love you and leave you. So I will see y'all in the next one. Cheers.